Hi, you guys. This is going to be super quick. I am at work and in between patients, but I, I listened to something this morning that hit a nerve and something that I was thinking about last night as well. And I know I responded, I don't even remember exactly what I talked about yesterday. I didn't mean to come on a couple days in a row, but that's what I'm doing. So I wanted to just take a minute this morning and talk to you about judgment and the way that we judge ourselves and the way that we fear judgment from everybody else. And a few different people have kind of posted different things about fearing judgment from other people or worrying about what other people think or other people's points of view about them. And I wanted to talk to you about how we keep ourselves stuck, partially because of our fears of judgment from what everybody else thinks and partially from judgment of ourselves. So my question to you today is how much are you keeping yourself small because you're afraid of what other people are going to think about you? And how much of yourself are you holding back on and not allowing to be present with because of this fear that if I was really truly myself, what would they all think? What would they judge? What would, what would happen next? How would they view me? And how much are you hiding? How much are you not allowing yourself to be the greatness that you are because you're afraid of what other people are going to think of you? And on that same line of thought, how much of it is you judging you of, I don't, I will only let three quarters of myself show or half of myself be present in the world because of all these other things that people might think if I, if I said what I really thought, if I did what I really wanted to do, if I lived the life I really wanted to live, if I did all the things and hi Jill, thank you. Um, I do. I think we do this. We keep ourselves small. We keep ourselves stuck because we're so afraid of how everybody is, else is going to view us or how we're viewing ourselves based on something we were taught when we were children or something we've seen in, I don't know, recent day something or something your friends sent the one time about the one thing that makes you think, oh, well, if I do this, if I say that, she's going to think this about me. So how much of you are you keeping hidden and not allowing to be you and to being all that you could be? And obviously this is something I've wrestled with for years of trying to be the perfect psychologist and be the professional and what will they think that I'm going into life coaching and oh, you know, you don't need a degree to be a life coach. And are they going to think, oh, look, she has a doctorate. She's throwing her doctorate away. I mean, I can come up with all these things, right, that I was afraid of at first and I've just pushed against it, right? And said, you know what, screw it. I'm going to do it anyways and see what that creates. So... There's this concept of choosing for every 10 seconds. And whatever you choose, you can choose again 10 seconds later. So what if you chose to just be you and to say what you're thinking and to be who you are and to not try to hide some part of it or to not try to morph it into something that you think everybody else is going to find acceptable? What if you just did the thing, whether it's pick the job or pick in this 10 seconds to to do A, B, and C. I don't know. I don't know what it is that you're mulling over choosing. But whatever it is, what if you just chose? And if you don't like the outcome, cool. Choose again. I know that's scary because we do. We keep ourselves so stuck. But what if we didn't? What if we just said, I don't care. I don't care anymore. So when I talk to people about judgment and the sheer of what other people are going to think about them, I talk a lot about... So what? So what if they think that about you? Then what? What does that mean? Does it mean it's true? Maybe. Maybe that's okay. Or maybe it doesn't mean anything. Nine times out of ten, or more like 99.9% .9 of the time, when people have a judgment about you, it's not about you. It's about them. It's about their own insecurities. We pay attention and we point out things in other people when we don't feel confident in that area of our lives or in that area about ourself in some way. I was talking to a friend about how other people judge her relationship. This is kind of like a non-traditional thing. And I said to her, I said, you know, I think, I think the thing is more so that everybody else is judging their relationship. And if they're not feeling confident and um, comfortable in whatever the relationship they're in or not in a relationship, then they're projecting all of that on you and how your relationship is wrong, right? 
And so are you going to hold on to that and believe that? Are you going to keep doing the thing that was already making you happy? So the other thing about judgment, and I talked about this in a live on my journey to present, but I think I'm going to keep talking about this. This is such an important topic. And after I did it last, I had a lot of questions and a lot of people were intrigued. And so, right, what is the topic? So when I talk about interesting point of view, and I talk about this a lot with people lately because it's something I'm practicing. And when I say interesting point of view, what I mean is that it's just that. It's not yes, it's not no, it's not I agree, it's not I disagree. It just is. So when somebody says something to you and said, oh, you're, you're so judgmental, as we're on a judgmental topic, right? I can align and agree with that and say, oh my God, I am so judgmental. God, I need to fix that about myself. And now I've gone into aligning and agreeing with it, making it solid. But if I resist and react it and react to it, how dare you say that about me? I am not judgmental. Look at all these ways I'm not judgmental. You've still solidified this. But when you can come at it from a, that's an interesting point of view. Do you see how that just lightens the whole thing? So like if you think of like a tug of war, right? Two people are tugging on either sides of the rope and that keeps that rope tight and in place. But as soon as one side lets go, the rope falls and the person kind of falls backwards, right? But you're not trying to hurt the other person. You're just keeping that rope tight as long as you're resisting. But when you let go of it, it just falls and it doesn't hold any significance anymore. So with ourselves and with other people, think about everything that is said, every opinion, every thought, every, I feel like you do this a lot. Interesting point of view. Cool. You're not disagreeing. And you don't even have to say it out loud. You can say whatever you want to say out loud because that's so much unimportance. What's really being said is what's happening in your mind and what's happening in their mind. And what we communicate with our words is so little of what we're actually communicating. But when we stop resisting and reacting or stop aligning and agreeing and just, yeah, interesting point of view. Cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's one of my favorites. (laughs) Just, okay, cool. You know, because you're not, you're not agreeing or aligning or anything with that. But we do this with ourselves too. We are the harshest judges of ourselves. And so I talked about this in a live, then I answered a question underneath it about interesting point of view. I have that point of view. And the question was, what, aren't you still holding it in place if you say I have that point of view? And my answer to that, I had to really think a lot about this and some of this is new to me too, but, um, is no, you're not holding it in place when you're just acknowledging, yeah, I have that point of view about myself. You're not saying, yes, it's true, or no, it's not true. You're just, interesting point of view, I have that point of view. And you'll find that if you say that about whatever thought is about yourself, God, I'm, I look so fat today. God, my, I, I'm, I don't know, what else, all the, with the, all the things we judge. I shouldn't have said that thing. They're going to think I'm stupid. All the things that we say in our head to ourselves. If we, interesting point of view, I have that point of view. <sighs> It just releases it. It isn't, it doesn't make it true. It doesn't make it untrue. And you'll find if you say it, interesting point of view, I have that point of view. Interesting point of view, I have that point of view. Enough times, it, it'll drop. There's nothing left to that. I'm putting together, it's recorded. I'm just in the process of putting together um, a confidence course, right? Like an e-course. Uh, it's an eight-week course, I think. Um, like I said, I'm still putting it together. But I talk a lot about judgment in it, and I did a whole, like, you know, week on it. Um, And the biggest point there is that we, as I was talking about that, is that we really are the center of our own universe. We are not the center of anybody else's universe. Nobody is spending their whole day thinking about us, thinking about what we said, what we did. Did we say it wrong? Did we we look weird? Did we have mascara on the top of our eye? Because God knows I, like, will look in the mirror and be like, how long has that been there? Right? Or... The day that you wear the, you know, earrings that mismatch because you got dressed in the dark or nobody cares. That's you. That's you worrying about it. So the example I always give, although there's lots of other, I can come up with a thousand examples, is if you are engaged in a conversation with your friend, somebody you care about, whatever, you're talking, you're walking, you're in your world, and somebody walks by you doing something crazy. So I always give the example of like some girl comes by like crab walking down the road right super weird you are going to give that about 2.5 seconds of your thoughts you're going to look at her and go that's weird anyways 
And you're going to go back to your conversation. And you're not going to care another thought about what that person did. Because that person has nothing to do with you. They're not the center of your universe. You are the center of your universe. And even with a family member, even with a friend, if you're sitting in judgment of somebody else in any way, shape, or form, you're not allowing yourself to receive any gifts that that person has for you. So if there's something to be learned, if there's something that they can offer you, if there's something to be received, and there's always something to be received, because we gift and receive to each other all day, all the time, in the way that we talk to people, and the way we interact with people. But as soon as you've gone to, into judgment of somebody else, you're not allowing yourself to receive from them anymore. Of course, I have calls coming through as I'm trying to do this. I don't know. Um, but we do that for ourselves too. So how much do we, do we lock ourselves out of ourself? Because we're judging ourselves. And what else is possible? Oh, that's the other thing I wanted to make sure I addressed. Is that people have asked me too. Okay, interesting point of view. Well, what do I do after that? So I had a friend say, you know, my kids, you know, drive me crazy. And they're not listening. And they're like, I hate you. And, you know, uh, teenage stuff, right? And I can interesting point of view that all, my, all I want so that I'm not affected. But, like, then what? What do I do next? So then you ask a question. So question always opens up possibilities and answers always shut them down. So questions empower, uh, answers disempower, right? So ask a question of what is possible now? What could I do or create in this moment that would create the outcome I'm looking for, right? What else can I be? What else can I do? What else can I contribute so that you know this whatever it is opens up with total ease does that make sense so I know I've done other things on questions and I do a lot of lives these days that I don't know what I've done where I think I did that in my journey to present main page but they're all on there I always like solidify you know make it so they stay um but I probably should do more on questions because that's important too but anyways, this is longer than I intended it to be. And oh, my patient's not here. Well, that's good. <laughs> but I will let you guys have an amazing day. It is Wednesday. It's field day for my kindergartner. So I'm sure there'll be all sorts of bumps and bruises at the end of that. And if you have kids, I know you're in the end of the school year probably too. And all sorts of interesting things going on this week. So I hope you're having a beautiful week. And I will, um, I will talk to you all soon. Thanks, you guys.